Product not yet rated. Welcome to the second episode of the Lionhead Video Diary. My name is Peter Molyneux. This episode is going to be all about combat. I got into a fight at school and I got my jaw broken. That was pretty nasty. I came away with all sorts of broken limbs and cuts and gashes and bruises and God knows what. My worst fight is probably where I just got knocked out by a midget. Well, not necessarily a midget, but he was a very small, small guy. Whether we like it or not, there was a lot of combat in Fable 1 and we really wanted to specialise and make something different for Fable 2. So we've looked at a couple of things. One is something that's called one-button combat. Now, a lot of people have said, you can't put combat on one button. What I hope this video diary says to you is that you can. On Fable 1, we had loads of different ideas about how we wanted to move forward with the combat. Um, and we always would come up with a new thing and there'd always be the standard problem of, well, how do we work this into, into, the, into the controls? And it was just so limiting thinking, well, we've run out of buttons for that. How will the player actually make this happen? And by stripping back to just using one button, it's like, well, it seems the sky's the limit all of a sudden. Anything we can think of based on the context that it's appropriate, we can do just with a single button press. The key thing that we've been uh, dealing with with one-button combat is ensuring that it is approachable for, for all gamers. It, it is approachable for people who haven't played games before. Um, but it's also got uh, the depth that seasoned gamers want. That was a, one of the key things that we felt we could have done a little better with in Fable 1. There are fewer things a player can do with his hands. So you have to make sure that of all the enormous varieties of actions that the character can do in the game, you always get the one that, you, that is most appropriate for where you want to be. So you almost want the, the game to read the player's mind and do exactly what he intends to do at, at that specific time, which, as you can imagine, mind reading is quite a difficult thing to program. Our goal is not to, to make combat look realistic, it's to make it believable. We want, we want you to feel like you're, you're in the game hitting the enemies. I mean, it's not a realistic game. It's got creatures in it, it's got hobs, it's got gigantic trolls, you use magic. Um, we, want, we want the combat to all fit together in this, this world and we want the world to be believable. The character in the game, we like to think, is smarter than any character in any game before this, as far as combat's concerned. He always knows where he is, he always knows what's, what's around him and he's going to use um, all items of the, the environment that he can to basically cause as much damage to his enemies as possible in the coolest way you can imagine. If you're close enough to the enemy and you press attack, you get to smack their head off a log, which is great. And then sets it up nicely for a finishing move. He's going to the loo. <laughs> we did loads of research. We looked at videos, we looked at games, we uh, just happened to find people around the studio that had life-sized weapons at home. Uh, a little bit disturbing. Um, not, not completely real, but there were some life-sized metal swords brought in, which it was really useful because we could go out into the car park and video ourselves doing specific moves for the hero. We also got a sword master in called Richard Ryan, who showed us how he would actually fight with a sword. Quite a scary guy. He had a guitar case full of weapons um, and didn't mind getting quite close to us when he was demonstrating swings and things. But that gave us a lot of ideas, a lot of new ideas. The most important factor in making combat believable is the reaction of the, the enemy. So when you hit the enemy, if they react in a way that's incredibly satisfying, it's just fantastic. We're looking at uh, perhaps unlocking certain elements of the combat further along down the storyline so that instead of having everything available from the start, your, your character becomes more skilled as the story progresses. The most exciting introduction to Fable is the flintlock pistol, which comes with a complete design and style of Fable 2, which is a highwayman. 
and you know, without high women, you have to have guns. I'm, I'm very confident, actually, that we're going to cover everything that, well, I w I'll never say everything that a player will want to do because there's some pretty weird players out there from, our, from the mail we get. But, you know, I, I'd say 95% of what people will want to do, I think we're going we're gonna to get in there. Absolutely. When it comes to combat, nothing beats a good old game of English football. Lionhead Challenge fellow Microsoft Game Studio Rare at a recent match. The footy against Rare was fantastic. I uh, really want to try and make it a regular thing, really. Just a, a regular drubbing that we can dish out to them. Yay! How's the match going, Wood? It's going pretty good. Are you winning? We are with 2-0 up front. Go on, Lionhead! And just for the record, who won? Lionhead or Rare? Lionhead, wasn't it, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Lionhead. Mm -hmm.